My name is Eddie Toffbeck. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here is your weekly technical analysis of LME, 3 month nickel, and zinc. I'll start with LME, 3 month nickel. Now, after being away on annual leave, it's nice to come back and see, still see the same basic drivers moving the market, despite the occasional daily hiccup. The hiccups have been contrary key reversals up and down over the last few weeks, but the rock of certainty has been anchored on the same few patterns. The middle tie, currently 17.045, and the upper tie, currently 25.40, of the big 2017-2018 shallow bullish shift pitchfork, plus the lower tie, currently 17.020, and middle tie, currently 19.330, of the October 2020 to March 2021 bullish shift pitchfork. Nearby has also been the slowly rising long moving average, currently 17,150. It was also, as I said some four weeks ago now, and I quote, this doesn't take away from some of the underlying bullish factors we've seen since the big drop back in March. I also added at the time, whilst these two pitchforks are in operation, the market will still have the bullish incentive, even if it sometimes it looks like it is missing. End of quote. Now this goes a long way to mitigating the strange indecision we've seen in recent weeks, primarily with contrary key reversals. And one final point I'd like to discuss, and it's to do with pattern morphing that's happened since about mid-June. Well, until recently. Uh, recently I had looked at the action over May to mid-June as a possible, if unusual, reverse head and shoulders pattern. I believe this is no longer so. And now look at this action plus the subsequent action since as a possible rising wedge pattern. The upper wedge trend line, currently 18,870, is fairly secure, though it was tested last Friday with a close over, but was found to be a false break higher, something these wedge patterns are well known for. The lower wedge trend line is more vague. You see, it can be seen either as the April today uptrend, currently at 17,805, or the May today uptrend currently at 17,695. They're not too far apart right now, but as time moves on, they will be. So watch out. It's also too early to give an eye to give ideas on the targets, whether upside or downside. But in this rising wedge pattern, is true, then I can give an idea of the initial size of the move to look out for. Please note that this is based on the May today action, as it is the smaller of the two. If this happens, then I will actually lay out potential for both patterns when it actually occurs. Now, a move up would be in the order of $1,385 on top of the break upwards from the upper trend line at that time. A move lower would be in the order of $715 off the break lower from the lower trend line, the uptrend line, at that time. Now please just be aware of false breaks, they are the curse on wedge patterns, generally. LME 3 month Zinc. On the surface, this metal looks like a gently rising market over the last few weeks, with the most notable feature being a weekly key reversal up last week. Not so. There are some significant forces at play here, and all is not what it looks, methinks. The main action before I went on annual leave was a weekly key reversal down some five weeks ago. You see, I had written back then, when I had made written commentaries in November, last year that is, how the then bullish incentive was still alive. I wrote back then and I quote, while superficially the market may be topping and looking sideways to a potential move lower, the reality is that the bullish incentive is still alive though at a less acute angle. It all depends on what the market will do with the big old 50% Fibonacci line at 28.06 because there's a lot of support below and also resistance above, end of quote. Well, the drop in the market causing that weekly key reversal down the original one stopped dead 
at the key 50% Fibonacci line at 28.06. It's interesting in all that move down that the key 50% Fibonacci line I pointed out back all those months ago in November last year at 20.06 has proved to be the stopping ground for this big weekly key reversal move down. Since then we've had no follow on lower but instead we've seen a move back up. Now I posed a question some four weeks ago related to this move uh, down and lack of follow through lower. Basically what's next? Well the action since the big fall in March looks suspiciously like a bearish bump and run reversal top. It's not perfect as the trend line for such a move will be down at 2777 just below the slowly rising long moving average. However it was not unusual for such a pattern to see some hesitation around this trend line area before seeing a strike for lower levels. The only issue is that the recovery has gone on for too long. In which case I put forward the idea for another pattern type. Possible bear flag or bearish measured move lower. What was most interesting about the whole affair was how prices had followed the broken but still seemingly valid May 2020 to date uptrend currently at 29.75. Indeed this uptrend is key to what has been going on in recent days. You see we have last week had daily countering moves to a minimum of five countering moves in a row. Now normally I would look at this and be an extremely extremely indecisive action. Yet we have seen the market gradually rise, sticking all the time to the rising uptrend as an attractor. This makes me think that such an action is not incidental. It seems to me that the market is currently trying to navigate up this uptrend, but it has at the steering wheel someone seemingly heavily inebriated, overcompensating on each day, as prices generally move in the direction that is wanted. This is not a safe action, nor can it last. I would urge caution for when the drunken driver of this market either stops or gets pulled over. Well, I'll just leave it to your imagination. Now, one final thing. I have still left targets X and X2 on the daily chart. These are, still are I suppose, the initial and full target levels for the diamond continuation pattern formed over January to March this year, back then. The market has already previously reached target X1 in the 30, 1395 area and I would previously expressed doubts about the market having the impetus to reach target X2 in the 3215 area. Thus having more or less fulfilled its primary purpose I was about to retire these two but I kept them on just in case. Maybe, just maybe, this diamond pattern from March earlier this year is indeed the driver for the recent moves higher and maybe for all the other patterns since as they are subservient to that core pattern moving the market higher. Just be careful I don't like drunken drivers or drunken markets either. Thank you for listening this weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bit.